Today on Parts Hold, we have Cliff Honeycutt, Coach Cliff, cat lover extraordinaire, and we are talking about whether or not you should sell aftermarket performance parts in your parts department, something that has been fairly taboo for uh, generations in uh, in parts departments. So we're also going to talk a little bit about Cliff's travels and much, much more today on Parts Hold. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hold on, everyone, while Cliff uh, comes in on Zoom. Oh, wait, he's here. <laughs> Live and in person. <laughs> what a wonderful week this is. It is Top Dog Week 2024, and Coach Cliff is here with me in person, and we have a pretty awesome topic uh, today to talk about. But first, how are you? I'm great. It feels crazy. Just... Listening to you say 2024 top dog is wild to me. Well, the fact that the crazy. year's almost over is a little it's, insane. What are we, two two months officially or, you know, unofficially, however you want to say that, but roughly two months away from the end of the year? Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me. I just put up my Easter decorations. <laughs> we had to get those bad boys down <laughs> real quick. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, so Easy Travels and you came in. Yesterday came in yesterday. Not no, not really easy travel. I got delayed, uh, as we Straight often do. Connecting or no, no connecting, right. no connecting. Thank heavens. Anytime you run a connection, you run the risk of getting delayed, getting a cancellation or whatever. So straight flight, super easy flight. It was an afternoon uh, for me, afternoon, and then run into the evening. But for y'all, it was early, early after or late afternoon, I guess. And uh, I've had a couple of people ask me, um, and I told them that you were fine, but any family members affected by the hurricane? No, thank heavens, no. Uh, we are southeast from Charlotte, so none for us. I uh, had so many people reaching out, so if you reached out to me, thank you very much and checked on me. Insane what's taking place in North Carolina. Asheville, doesn't, it doesn't even look like the same place. There's towns, uh, Chimney Rocks wiped out. Uh, spruce pines gone like yeah. it's it's a uh, wild there's going to be a, a a lot of rebuilding yeah a long time to come so uh anyone that is uh, affected by that or um helping with those efforts and donating like uh that's pretty awesome yeah if you're, yeah if for you're sure now but that is uh yeah that was pretty crazy and then another hurricane kind of coming right behind it like it was uh we've had some clients down in florida that got absolutely flooded hammer um, hammer but uh, some of the wildest video I've seen is where the alligators were in like people's homes. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I saw one working out. <laughs> like there's an alligator in a home gym, and then I saw an alligator biting a tire. Saw that one too, like rolling down the uh, or street, I guess. And yeah, he, yeah. you know yeah. what we call that in Florida? Tuesday. <laughs> That's terrible. That's <laughs> wild. Man, I hope everybody gets back uh, back on their feet there. But yeah. Um, the show must, as they say, go on. And today's show is a question. And I think that you kind of got an idea of how you want to frame this whole thing. But the topic today is, should I sell aftermarket performance parts in my parts department? Mm -hmm. So um, you had kind of a layout you wanted to do for this, right? What did you, how'd you want to frame yeah, this? Yeah, I think um, I think the thing that I would say is what I've been asked about it is, Several parts managers asked, and several dealers have talked about it. Should we offer performance parts for their vehicles? Should we offer off-road packages for for if you work for a manufacturer with that? And then the other piece of that is, should I be offering aftermarket parts for normal repairs? And the other thing that came out about this is, I had a friend of mine reach out to me, and they had a friend, a friend of a friend. Okay, Are you with me? And do they all have cats? Of course they have cats if they're friends. Okay. I don't uh, like where this is all headed. But they had put some aftermarket shocks on their vehicle and okay. approached a dealer, and the dealer said that they wouldn't warranty them and kind of wanted to know, was that a common thing or wouldn't warranty the repair because they put shocks okay. on. So a friend outside of the automotive industry, yep. they get a 
an aftermarket shock job done. Correct. And then they have a problem, so they take it to the dealer and That's say, right. my car's not operating right. Yeah, I, and what they did is they told the dealer, hey, I put these aftermarket shocks on here, and now my car's making a noise. Pretty easy kind of indication, but the dealer was saying, hey, listen, we can't we can't warranty that repair, so you would have to be responsible, and they couldn't understand why the dealer wouldn't warranty the repair. And so there's multiple layers there. So anyway, it kind of got me thinking and piggybacking on the the performance and the off-road packaging stuff is should we be offering that in our parts department? And what would that look like? And is there pros and cons? That's kind of what I want to discuss you and I is, is there pros and cons to offering those performance off-road or aftermarket parts in my parts department? Okay. So do you want to start with the pros or the cons? Let's start with the pros because I believe there's a, a handful of reasons why we should and why we could, but it's going to definitely take some some planning on our behalf, um, and then we can get into some of the cons. All right, let's hear them. Okay. Uh, so number one under pros is there is a huge opportunity for me to really make a mark on a market. Yeah, it's big. It's a big market, right? Yeah, it comes close to. Let me make sure I get the statistics right. 12.5 billion in performance parts and 51.8 in accessories and modifications. 51.8 billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So if I could get a little piece of that, uh, I think it would be well worth me taking a look at and making some plans on. Do you know how much was captured by uh, manufacturer dealerships? I did not look up that statistic. Okay. $13. That's probably very accurate. Very accurate. Very accurate. So so there's a lot of shops that just do performance upgrades. Yeah, I mean, they think about how many, I'm sure, well, certainly when you were living in, in Florida, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know the market of Illinois, but I'm sure there was four-wheel drive only shops that were just doing modifications for four-wheel drives. Yeah, right in uh, right in Orlando, one of the biggest uh, Jeep modification shops in the country. Yeah. Um, and it was really rare at that Chrysler store that we'd sell a Jeep, or in a lot of cases, just even a Ram truck that wasn't uh, lifted or leveled, I, I, one of the two. Out of the dealerships that, I, that we're going to, more often than not, I'm seeing inventories on the car lots just full of vehicles with lift kits or some type of modification. They're pretty cool. I, I think they're amazing. I'm always torn when I see them. Is like, okay, are they just going to go get groceries with that thing? Are they actually taking it off road? Is it ever going to make it off road? You could split hairs on that. It really doesn't matter either way. It's your an individ uh, individualization of the vehicle. Your Jeep that just died. Did you have that modified in any way, shape, or form? I'd appreciate you being a little bit more sensitive to my heartbreak over the summer. This, <laughs> we, I'd like to have a moment of silence. Thank you. <laughs> That's like the second time in the last week I've said something really <laughs> offensive to you. I was just telling my wife about that. Did day. she laugh? Yeah, she, no. goes, she goes, you're so crazy. Uh, so anyway, but it's very true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a world that people really want to make their vehicle ind individualized and want to set it apart from the crowd. And I think performance and uh, off-road packages or a great opportunity for us to really make a mark on it. And people love that stuff. There was no doubt that that was your Jeep, right? Yeah. And then like all the personalization, customization, what you really find is there's hardly ever any two that are alike. Agreed. So yep. it's literally like turning your vehicle into a fingerprint mm -hmm. that there are no, uh, that there's no match. Well, think about how many times you've seen somebody um, at a stoplight and you've seen somebody else talking to them saying they love their Jeep or they love their truck or they love their car, like whatever the case is, you get a lot of heads turned that way. You get a lot of heads turned, but also they ask the question, where'd you get that done at? Great point. Didn't even think about that, but that's a great point. Yeah. So I think that that's probably one of the, when you think about sales opportunity is the, the buzz that happens like within the aftermarket and performance, like that little market, it's a little community and they're talking to each other, right? Like, yeah. so it's a, uh, oh, where'd you get your lift kit done? Where'd you get your leveling, leveling kit, your light bars, whatever it is, where'd you get that done? Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't even imagine the high value of saying, oh, I got that done at my dealer. So I think for me, it's, uh, and I wrote this down, it's for me getting them to come home 
so to speak, that they're not going elsewhere, that they don't fall in love with the crew. We can have guys that are highly intelligent, that understand the aftermarket performance world and, and off-road. I, I, I don't claim to understand it, uh, but there's guys that love that and really have, have an understanding of it and can really add value to the customer. Not to mention, uh, if you're a GM or dealer listening to this, there's an opportunity to make some money on the front end off of this. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of, and, and there, I was joking about the $12 thing. Sure. There, there's a lot of dealerships that do a really, really good job of that. Absolutely. Um, the way that I kind of summarize that particular note was that's playing offense, not defense with the customers. Mm. Like the thought of letting your customer go and someone else putting a tool on that car, um, and then them just, uh, defecting and going away before you have a chance. Right. Because, uh, that's the hardest part is, is that a lot of times these people will customize these vehicles right after they buy them before they might even go and do their first service. Yeah. They're doing a thing. And it's not a stretch that you would have like a performance shop that also does maintenance on the cars. Absolutely. Yeah, so, for sure. So you leave, you buy the car, you, they leave and they never come back. I don't know that there's a world that we can get that stuff. And, and from a dealership, looking back when, um, you know, the early 2000s where we were doing just some small modifications to some of the vehicles that we sold, I searched multiple areas to find that. And there's multiple, multiple avenues now and probably a wider a range of, of opportunities with Internet, way more available uh, there's just a lot of there's just a lot of levels to that that there's really an opportunity to make some money. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And yeah. I don't know, you kind of the like inventory wise. I feel like that's almost one of those things where you could do most of your modification. You could do a made to order from a pseudo catalog of sorts, and then it's like so. Let's say buy the car. You could either have it pre done or you can have somebody come in for their first visit and they go through like whatever virtual electronic catalog and then you have it set up for the next day or the day before. Like there's a lot of ways to make it feel like the inventory is there without you having to pile up hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in physical inventory. So I would throw that into my cons and reason not to do it would be the inventory. Like I'm got to get strategic on it if I'm going to house any of that stuff. I may want to house some of it, but I'm not going to house a bunch of it. But I'm going to find the person who can get it to me the quickest. Uh, there's also a thing there with with stuff that would be more common to break. I might want to keep that on hand in, in case something goes wrong. For sure. Okay. Uh, so, so the inventory portion of it's a tricky one. Yeah. So I think the inventory and then uh, sourcing, pricing, all that stuff becomes Agreed. an issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. The pricing, the pricing structure, you're just going to have to develop it and, and try different things. Uh, but I would be smart about it. Like in a lot of cases, if someone can get it at a one-stop shop, that money, you know, is, is a little bit different than them trying to you know, if they're if they're willing to put a six inch lift on a F two fifty that they just bought, pricing's not always well. So that brings up something that's really like really advantageous to the dealership is that if you buy it at time of purchase, you can roll it into the payments. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I think you know when I was saying earlier that there's some opportunity for some dealers to make some money. There's there's tons of opportunities out there. They're just going to have to advertise and be smart about it. That's right. So for an extra 75 bucks a month, like what can you do to personalize your car? Um, I'm, there's a dealer uh, down south that has a bunch of them on their showroom that are, you know, giant lift kits on it and uh, just amazing stuff. Uh, but seeing that thing and touching it, that's another piece of it, too, that there has to be something there that they can see, touch and feel they're going to want to, well, they're going to want to touch it. Well, Chris, it. Chris did that in the, and when he was at the BMW store in Southern California is, is that he always had like the fancy wheels and the accessories. That was the showroom car it was like the fully loaded, the decked out thing. Yeah. And then it just made people want it when yeah. they saw it. So yeah. I like that. Uh, well, we turned that from a con into a pro almost, but yeah. So you definitely have to be careful because you can't, you can't buy a uh, eleven link kit thrown into the matrix necessarily, right? No, you've I got don't to, think so. You've got to kind of pick your your margins are probably not going to be what they could be on certain other uh, on other parts and everything like that. And then trickiness too. And then what was another con that you had? Uh, warranty. Okay, so I'm going to present that the warranty could actually be a pro, not a con, and. Let me tell you why. Please enlighten me. So you give a really, really good example of your friend that said, hey, I went and had shocks done at this place. And then you bring it to the dealer and the dealer tells you 
sorry, there's no, I can do the things not covered under warranty. However, if I sold the shocks to you and you come back, there's some sort of warranty on it. Oh, that's great. Whether it's from the dealer or whether it's from the aftermarket shock supplier or whatever, but the customer doesn't perceive it as multiple warranties. They perceive it as one. So even though it might void out the manufacturer warranty in certain cases, which certainly it can and does do, um, there's still a protection for the customer because they bought it from you. Because I'm selling it, so therefore I can protect the the uh, so, the inventory or so th the item. Isn't uh, isn't the warranty the number one objection that you get? Most of the time, yes. So yep. flip that, and that's how, I don't know, maybe how I'm looking at it might be the right way. No, I think it's a great way to look at it. I think that's probably the only way to look at it if you're looking at it from a uh, an offensive and not a defensive approach. And uh, the other thing with that, too, like I didn't even think about it until you said that. The other piece to that for me now is thinking about the customer experience on it. Like that customer experience would be really elevated if I'm selling the product and offering a warranty on it. Um, and who knows? Maybe it's a thing where they can figure out what else is in their garage that they want to modify. And, you know, does that lead into if you have a collision center on site, could that lead into doing wraps? Like that's a huge thing right now and a huge opportunity. Tons of different avenues there. Yeah, like endless possibilities now yeah. that you've been kind of unpacking. I don't have a long list of cons. No, I didn't. I had just three. I had warranty, inventory, and pricing structure, and that yeah. was it for me. And maybe it's a little more work. Yeah. And and frankly, what I don't know about you, I would probably employ in my parts department, I would have like a performance specialist. Well, so thinking about that, there's some some stores out there that we have that are a part of our coaching program, uh, some really large stores that have uh, experts on certain pieces, whether it's windshield repair or wheel repair or tire experts in their drive and their service drive. Why couldn't you have in a... Uh, an upgrade modification accessories expert sitting there in the drive or in the showroom, however that looks, uh, ready to pitch that, that's really in tune with that, really knows what people are looking for and has multiple places to source the stuff from. Lovely. Awesome. All right, cool. Anything else you can think of? As we that's all, I, that's all I got, out? man. That's all I got. Cool. I hope that at least makes you stop and give a second thought to the possibility of entertaining aftermarket performance parts in your, uh, in your department. Like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have to be the enemy. And most importantly, I think that Cliff said it a couple of times, the offense versus the defense is like, I don't know how many times you want to send your uh, customers to the competitor. Yeah. So if there's nothing else, that's it. But the great news is that there's tons of upside besides that, right? There's the financial upside. There's just like the um, the attachment that people would have to their cars when they personalize them. Like it feels like it's Cliff's Jeep, right, at that point. So um, I hope that uh, you guys got a lot of good stuff out of this. And we will see you next time on Parts Hold. Here to fill the order.